sparring. June, do you know what a sparring is? Of course I do. <laughs> Tom Davidson, where's one? Um, uh, <clears throat> an Irishman wore a sparring, but I know his name was Jock. Oh, goodness me, I think... <laughs> the only way I can get out of this is to tell you the time by the clock at three past nine. Tom Davidson wore his sparring underneath. He fair caught his breath. But he died of natural causes, he was tickled to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Once again, once again, that was one out of the box. Yes, 25 seconds and 10 shillings to Mrs. Cobden of Aberdeen, Aberdeen Street, Geelong. Aye, and OK, don't forget to keep sending in your suggestions for our little, little game of... Uh, That's right, time. send them into the station to which you're now listening. Okay, right. Aye. That was rhyming time. Oh, and now don't I'm... give me the box. Here, <laughs> take it away, box. lock it up again. What have you got there? Oh, I've got a message here, Jack. Oh, you've go got on, a message. You go. You're you a shocking a reader. Uh, yeah, my. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah, moo. What language is this? Oh, <laughs> wrong side up. Hey, you better have a go. Um, good. Whether you live in the heart of the city, the suburbs, or the country, remember the fragrance of a pine forest is as close as a bottle of pine air. Pine air, pine disinfectant, brings outdoor freshness to every room in your home, and also the highest standard of home hygiene. Pine air sweetens and pine air safeguards the air. You know, pine air so powerful and so pure, it destroys the dreaded typhosis bacillus within three minutes. They've changed it. Yes, it proves you care when you pine air. What is the finest product of its kind? Pine air. What is the finest product you will find? Pine air. Once you try it, you will know that you were wise to buy it. Pine air. It's the finest product of its kind. Pine air pine disinfectant is so powerful it destroys Bacillus typhosis within three minutes. Pine air sweetens and safeguards the air. Proves you care when you pine air. It's the finest product of its kind. Pine air pine disinfectant. Bill, you've had four weeks holiday. I think it's nearly time that you did a little extra work tonight. Have you got a partner in this act? Yeah, well, I have got a partner. We've flown him in at great expense from St Kilda at a milk bar there, Rod McLennan. Yeah. I, milk bar. Yes, I paid yes. his bail. <laughs> Good. We'd like to present the Corn Belt Symphony. Thanks, Tom. You can have the corn. Thank you very much. Shall I lead? Please do. They all go rooty tooty too too to rooty tooty too too to rooty too too. You'll hear a beat that is new. Dance into the Corn Belt Symphony. They all go politely. Ta 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 ta. Oh, it's so cozy. Why, even Mama and Pa love to do the Corn Belt Symphony. They get a solid kick from a corny lick that goes a hey swing your partner. And when the fiddles bow, you can really. Go with the do si do si do yeah. To rooty tooty too too to rooty tooty too too to rooty too tea. I know it's corny, but gee, how you love the corn belt symphony. They all go to rooty tooty too too to rooty tooty too too to rooty too too. You'll hear a beat that is new Dance into the Corn Belt Symphony Take it, boy! Have they all go to round the street Or the lady Why, even Mom, I know you all I love to do the Corn Belt Symphony They get a solid kick from a corny lick That goes a hey, swing your partner and when the fiddles bow, you can really go with an alaman left and the dosey dosey do. To rooty tooty too too, to rooty tooty too too, to rooty tooty. I know it's corny, but gee, how you love the corn belt symphony. And Mr. Davidson and his hazy five will now take over. Solid 
a kick from a goal He licked the goes of his swing your partner And when the fiddles blow You can really go With an alaman left And a do si do si do To root ti toot ti I know it's corny, but gee, how you love the Corn Belt Symphony. How you love the Corn Belt Symphony. Very nicely done, Bill and Rod. Uh, uh, by the way, Dick, we have somebody outside who has come in and answer to the call for uh, players of the black and white rag. Very good, Jim. I don't know if it's a boy, girl, big, small. Uh, anyway, could we have them in? It's a boy and big. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's been some time since you learnt the black and white rag. Uh, you were probably a boy... If you don't mind me saying so, sir, you were probably a boy when the black and white rag was written. I was. I was fairly young. Do you remember when it was written at all? I couldn't say when it was written, but I played it in 1929. 1929? Good heavens, I wasn't born then. <laughs> uh, introduce us to your mate. Uh, Mr. Uh... Ogilvy. O-G-I-L-V-I-E. Mr. Ogilvy. Ogilvy. What's Ro the question? Roy name? Ogilvy. Roy uh, were you a professional pianist at one time? Oh, semi-professional? Uh, semi-professional. I did a little of it. Yeah. Yes, my, my parents have spoken of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I Mr. Ogilvy, what, uh, what is your job? I'm retired. You are retired? Exactly. I'm retired. Well, uh, retiring, I'm too young. <laughs> yes, I are. Where from? You. Uh, the Victorian Railways. Oh, well, that un oh, yes, it's understandable there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, how definitely. long how long were you there with the Victorian Railways? Uh, with the Railways for just on 47 years. Fancy being retired that long. <laughs> <laughs> just on 47 years, eh? I, a... I was in the job for I just I suppose you on... thought it was going to be permanent when you took it on. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> they do, they turn out permanent some of those jobs, <laughs> don't they? Uh, Roy, uh, of course, naturally, you've, uh, you've been playing the piano for many years, too. I have. I did, played you, as... did you learn or... Uh, I learnt uh, in the legitimate style as a schoolboy. Yes, I see. And then uh, did you play by the lugger tool later on? or? Uh... Oh, some of that. Mm -hmm. Some of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, mostly uh, from the copy and mem yes. memorised. Memorised, I see. Well, Roy, we'll be interested to, uh, to hear what you can do with the old black and white rag. Would you mind going over? Thank you. Roy Ogilvy, much. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Roy, I... I might mention to you too, before you uh, touch a note on that piano, that it has just been played by two very fine pianists, Winifred Atwell and Mabel Nelson. So you've got something to live up to, Roy. <laughs>
I'd hate to say this, but that's a bigger hand than Winifred got. <laughs> but still, you played a different number to her. <laughs> See, that's it. And, and you've been playing a bit longer than her, too. Roy, you don't mind, oh, I, whether you mind or not, I'm going to ask you, because you can ask me uh, the same question. How old are you? I'm uh, retired. Yes. <laughs> but you won't, you won't come it, eh? But what, what I'm are, over 60. You're over, well, that's what I was trying to convey to the listeners, see, that you're well, a man over 60 and still play the piano as well as that. Seeing that you are such a persuasive gentleman. Yeah. And uh, so well, friendly. Now don't tell me, don't tell me anymore. 64, that's near enough. I'm nearer to 70 than 60. Well. <laughs> Yes. Can I interrupt? I don't yes, interrupt yes. often, but yes. I must tell everybody too that I, when I saw Roy, I thought I knew his face. He accompanied me on a job I did recently and accompanied me very well, which is a different thing to playing the black and white rag, you'll agree. My word it is. Good Thank on you, Roy. Thank you very much, sir. Well, I, I, Roy, it's, it's, it's very, very good indeed. Uh, would you mind uh, accepting that little money from, oh, the, that's very from nice the Happy of you. Gang? And also, Winifred Atwell would like you. You're going along to see her show, of course. Yes, yes. That's the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, w Winifred would like you to accept this LP record by Decker. Yes. And, uh, of course, it is autographed by Winifred herself. Yes, it is. Yeah. It plays 50 more all-time hits. So there you are. And thank you, Roy. And uh, any time, any time of, uh, uh, that you're uh, we're looking for a good pianist, leave your name and address at the office, and we'll probably send you out on a job somewhere. Thank you very That's much. much. Very much. They say that they're on the way out, but watch out, they could be back. The sticky beaks of the insect world, those flies that stuck to us in January. Keep on spraying Burnside's two-way spray, doubly deadly Burnside's two-way spray. Swatting and swiping will get you nowhere, but spraying Burnside's two-way spray definitely will. Burnside's spray slays as it sprays all manner of insect pests, particularly flies and mozzies. And that two-way action of Burnside's means a killing action for weeks to come. And do you know what gives that deadly, deadly killing action to Burnside's two-way spray? It's Dieldrin, death-dealing Dieldrin. And Burnside spray is the only domestic spray in Australia to contain it. Yes, indeed, spray on with Burnside's two-way spray. Those sticky beaks, the flies that stuck to us in January could be back. For more punishment from Burnside's two-way spray. Thank you, Don. I suppose you've noticed, ladies and gentlemen, there's just a little scotch has sneaked back into the program. We got rid of it for a few weeks, but the, the scotch jokes and all about the sporins and tickling and things like that are back in. And that's because Tom Davidson is with us again. Welcome back, Tom. And uh, I don't know whether they're going to play Porter Gaff or Porter Prince. It's just got Porter here, but I think it might be the Prince. Right, let's go.
You know, there are still lots of people camping and caravanning, still lots of people swatting and swiping flies. Get spraying with Burnside's two-way spray and you'll cop the lot. It's doubly deadly. Burnside's two-way spray. And here's a number from Mrs. Grubb of Kenilworth Grove Gardener, sung by the 3DB Men's Choir. Just a minute, we organise. Who's the bass? I'm the bass. You're the bass. It's like in there, right? bass. no one bass than me. Boys Sopranos. All set. When you're camping in the country, you'll be scratching like a monkey. If you don't put in your humpy, snack on Burnside spray. Nights can long so long and dreary, daylight finds you tired and weary. Burnside's keen, like always cheery, so use Burnside spray. Keep your camp delightful, treat it and be keen. Thank you, fellas, and thank you, Mabel. And the Burnside spray you spray today stays to slay for many a day. There must be some of those recording companies that record those crummy commercials have heard that, surely. Yes. That, that's... <laughs> People who safeguard our country. I think we've got a sailor out there or something, probably. Would you mind uh, introducing? No, he's not a sailor after. Oh, hello, hello. How are you? I know this face. My word, I do. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Not only have I seen it uh, here before, ladies and gentlemen, but I've seen it on point duty when I've been going, you know, pull over here. <laughs> this is um, Constable John Jenkins. I don't know whether John. Uh, Likes to be known as Constable Jenkins on the air, do you, or just John? Oh, it doesn't make any difference to me, Dick. Quite no, there. I see. John, where are you stationed now? You were in West Melbourne when I... Uh... That's right, yes. I've gone a little bit further out towards Dandenong. Uh, Dick, I'm at Mount Waveland, yeah. Are you? Yes. Oh, well, that's very good. And how's things out there? Oh, very good. You know, I can uh, generally yodel a bit out near the mountains. It's yes. Quite all right, yeah. <laughs> nice, and, nice and quiet? Yes, it is, Dick. As a matter of fact, it's uh, a little bit different than what it was at uh, North Melbourne. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh... Don't take any notice, John. I'll get you to arrest him in a minute. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, Dick, I was going to tell you a little instance happened a few years ago at North Melbourne. This is all right, is it? Uh, it's dry, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes John. John. Mr. Porter listens in, you know. <laughs> He's on, well, he... And if you're going, as a matter of fact, this happened before Mr. Porter joined the job. Oh, we'll say what you like. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, uh, Dick, this happened uh, about eight or nine years ago when I was stationed at North Melbourne. There was a particular lady came in one night and she was crying, you see, and she's holding her right eye. And I sat it down and I said, uh, just take your time, madam. I said, uh, everything's all right. So she sat down and I said, uh, what's your trouble? She said, oh, that monger of a husband of mine's been going at me again. I said, what do you mean? Oh, she said, he'd been punching me in the right eye, see? And I said, well, what are you holding the other eye for? She said, oh, he said he had a feed of the right, so I told him never go out the left for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter how bad they are, Perry, I'll write them down. <laughs> All right. I can't remember what he said just before change. <laughs> Left eye, he said she was hitting at the right. No, never mind. John, sing a song, will you? John Jenkins. Thank you very much. Dusty Rose, thanks, Dick. Thanks, Mom. Got no money, got no shake. All this worry is bending my back. I gotta keep going, come turn back. Gotta keep toting this load. I'm just stumbling through the dark. Hear me mumbling as I walk. Heaven help me. Hear my prayer, show me the end of this road. Nobody knows what a load I'm carrying. Nobody cares if it's rags I'm wearing. Nobody 
says, Brother, can I share your troubles? Traveling on a dusty road. Toddling along till I sweat and swelter. Singing a song till I reach the delta. Out in the storm, not a place to sleep or shelter. On a dusty road. Swarms to the right of me, swarms to the left of me, blue skies I never see. Though the road looks back, I'll never turn back. Straight ahead lies my destiny. I'll find my way, though the dust be blinding. I'll paint the clouds with a silver lining. I'll find the land where the sun is always shining. At the end of a dusty road. Oh, very good. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind accepting this <laughs> yes. little uh, trophy? Yes. There's a recording there, a Decker, yeah, a recording featuring thank Winifred Atwell, yeah. also a little loose yeah. change. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Right, John. Thank goodbye. <laughs> it's not by chance that hospitals and government institutions rely on pine air to combat germs. Pine air to sweeten and safeguard the air. Proof positive that Pine Air is the proved way to bring the highest standard of home hygiene. From Mrs. C. Stewart of Darvel Street, Rosanna. The Looney Boys Choir. So many ways on summer days you'll find Pine Air of old. It's fresh, a fine, a fine fragrance. Here's something to try soon. In any room where <laughs> With bad side screen, pine air. Thank you, boys. Thank you, Mabel. And our usual reminder, look for that clean, keen green colour to Burnside's Pine Air. Green for safety, so go safe. Green Pine Air. It's time once again to turn the clock back in our weekly edition of the Happy Gang's Backdates for memories of the news and music of the year 1920. Much still remained to be done in clearing up the aftermath of the Great War, as this headline on the 6th of January tells us. Giving up the war criminals, German government may resist. Presentation of a 200-page booklet giving the names of the Germans who are wanted in connection with war crimes has thrown German political and diplomatic circles into a violent agitation. Herr Bauer's government is asking how it can be expected to arrest such national heroes as Field Marshal von Hindenburg and what troops will hand over their commanders for trial. Two Australian aviators were the subject of another headline on the front page of our old 1920 Herald. Across Africa by aeroplane. <coughs> Lieutenants S. Cotton and W. A. Townsend, who proposed to fly from Cairo to the Cape in an airco aeroplane, left Limpney in Kent, Limpney, uh, this morning. They mounted their machines today, climbed through the rain, and soon disappeared. But their departure scene was a quiet one, with only the works managers being present. Three quarters of a page was devoted to cricket, which proves that it was just as important a news item then as it is at this moment. In fact, this was the biggest headline of all in our paper. Mellister has run more than 300 miles on cricket pitches. Though he is 50 years of age and has been playing first-class cricket for 35 years, Peter Mellister is still one of the best batsmen in Australia. Mellister has made 19,293 runs at an average of 37.46. Here is his advice to the young. They come down to the nets and take absolutely no interest in their practice, remaining ten minutes or a quarter of an hour and then clearing home. What they really should do is practice the game in all departments, batting, bowling and fielding. Proficiency in all these means success for a young player. Perhaps it wouldn't be a bad idea to send a copy of this to the members of the Australian side before the fifth test. Good idea, Bill. We will leave you to decide that perennial question, is the working man better off today after listening to this news item? Giving evidence before the Basic Wage Commission, a witness said that he earned £4.96 a week as a motor tyre moulder. 
He had not been able to purchase a new suit in the last 12 months as an Australian tweed would cost him seven pounds and a blue surge of imported woolen material would cost him 10 pounds with three pounds more for the extra pair of trousers. He required four hats, three for work and one for Sunday wear. He bought one pair of braces for best at four and six, another for work at three and six. He would need six working shirts in 12 months and three shirts for best wear. He had to pay seven and six each for them. He required four pairs of underpants. Witness said he had never owned a sports coat. If he had the money, he might buy one for comfort. But on the other hand, he would just as soon go about in his shirt sleeves. He thought slippers were a reasonable comfort for a working man, but they cost seven and six a pair. So he hadn't been able to replace the ones he'd worn out. Looking through the advertisements, we found this in the amusements column. Town Hall, packed to the doors last night for E.J. Carroll's two mammoth Australian film productions, The Man from Kangaroo, featuring Snowy Baker and Ginger Mick by C.J. Dennis. Seats should be booked to avoid the crush. Prices, three shillings, two shillings and one shilling. Yes, they packed them in in those days without rock and roll. If you were thinking of going on a holiday, then you probably studied these ads. T and O Company, Mantua, 10,885 tonnes. Fair to Sydney, first saloon, three pounds fifteen. Second saloon, two pounds five. If you were looking for something closer to home, here was a startling one under the headings of hotels and holiday resorts. Warburton, the La La, rebuilt 1914, again improved 1919. Every convenience. <laughs> And here are some of the tunes that you may have whistled in the Roaring Twenties. Some of the tunes in the Roaring Twenties. Oh, lady, oh, how she can snuggle, she's as sweet as can be. And when we're in the parlor, oh, the way she whispers pretty nothings to me. All I can do is holler, oh, it isn't what she does, but oh, the clever way she does, especially when she meets me beneath the moon above. Sweet cookie, oh, the way she sends me with the go-getter mind and puts me in a flurry, oh, the way I fall for all her beautiful lies. Believe me, I should worry, oh, oh, the way she feeds me happy, oh. I think she'll drive me daffy, oh, 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 how my super sentimental, wonderful sweetie can love. Whispering while you cuddle near me, whispering so no one can hear me, each little whisper seems to cheer me. That's what I'm looking for. 
I'm always looking to rain time, and I can't find this silly looking place. <laughs> Believe me, I'm always chasing. <laughs>